<laughs> and I want you to know one thing. It's been a pleasure. You just like to dance, don't you, Carl? That's right. You, know, you like to dance. <laughs> that was famous. Hello, welcome to One on One. I'm your host, Greg Walker. Well, we got a guest on this edition that I've really looked forward to interviewing, quite frankly. We haven't been together much in a lot of years, but we grew up in the church together. He's a couple of years older than I was, but, you know, we really looked up to him, all the guys my age, because he always treated us as one of the guys. Richard Rogers, you know, back in the day, we called him Dickie Bird. When I called him that a few weeks ago, he said he hadn't heard that in 40 plus years. Well, he retired from law enforcement after 40 years. He was a financial and health care investigator. He's done really well. He has a wonderful family. He's a good man. And let me add this, and we're going to talk much more about it on these next two shows, because we'll have to do two. He's also one of the most underrated, outstanding athletes that I think has ever come through Montgomery County. How about that compliment? Richard Rogers joins us today. I hope you'll settle back, relax, and enjoy a fun, down-to-earth conversation with a man that I'm proud to call friend. He'll join us right after these words. It's the Nissan Now Sales Event at Matthews Nissan. Voted Clarksville's best place to buy a car. Nissan was a major hit at the auto show. 7877 off a new Altima. New Versa, 10677 6777 off a new Rogue. 11777 off a new Titan. Incredible. Get big savings at MatthewsNissan.com. You're going to love our prices, Matthews. Life is good. Through the years, you've worked, played, and vowed to protect each other. Because you love her, you make sure you have made your final arrangements. Pre-planning protects your loved ones from the burden of making those decisions during a time of loss. At Neil Tarpley Parchman Funeral Home, services are professional, personal, dignified, and affordable. Neil Tarpley Parchman, people who care, a name you can trust. Welcome to our show today. He's in the house, and we're proud to have him in Clarksville. Richard Rogers. Hi, Greg. Dickie Bird. That's the last time I'll call you that. <laughs> you know, we were talking, though. You did say the other day you hadn't heard that in years, but you told me you actually did hear it at your class reunion. I sure did. I sure did. Boy, you took a good-looking gal to that reunion. You had them all wondering about you, didn't you? Uh, especially the girls, they were wondering who that was, and I, I told some of my guy buddies, but I didn't tell the girls. So, yeah. Took your daughter. I did, my youngest daughter, yeah. Ashley. Let's uh, talk about your family a little bit now. Your wife, Marilyn, buddy, uh, she's going through some tough times, and I know you are with her. She's in remission of lung cancer. Um, uh, small cell lung cancer, um, uh, but she's in remission, but she's lost the ability to walk. Mm. So uh, it's it's tough. It's tough on her. But she's she's a fighter. She is she's fighting. Hanging in there. Yeah. Do you think she'll ever be able to walk again? I think so. Um, I think she will. Um, we're we're trying to work on that. Build oh, yeah. up her strength in her legs. So I think she'll get there. Well, just like today, you came from Hendersonville to Clarksville, and we appreciate that a lot. Uh, but you have to have a caretaker come in. Uh, I, I do. It, Greg, it's my pleasure to be here. I'm, I'm excited to be here. But if I leave, I have to have somebody there with me. Well, sure. So to help. I told you how good you looked today. Got on your master's shirt and your master's vest, man. Hey, it's master's week. It's you master's got to we tape this show, this is the 4th it is. of April, and when we tape this show, who are you taking this weekend? You got a pick? I do. Justin Thomas is my man. Boy, is he hot. I mean, can this guy, can he go on a birdie binge or what? I think he can. And I think he can. I think he will. Now, number one, if he can just keep it right up here, 
number one is going to be hard to beat too, Mr. Johnson. It, it's the most beautiful place in the world. I think it's the, for me, it's the best sporting event on the planet. And uh, if you've never been to Augusta, you would not believe the elevation changes and the indolations uh, on that golf course. There's not a level piece of ground you can hit from except on the greens. It's unbelievable. Did you eat a pimento cheese sandwich too? Dollar and a half. I sure did. Boy, you can't what beat a those, deal. You can't beat those prices. No, can you? no. What a deal. <laughs> what a deal. It's just immaculate. It's just the whole place is immaculate. They know how to do that and they do it very well. Well, it's the only major that plays at the same course every year. And of course, when the azaleas are blooming about that time, I mean, it's just beautiful, isn't it? Oh, it is. It's just a gorgeous place. A gorgeous place. Tell us about your two daughters. Uh, my oldest daughter, Jennifer, uh, lives in Gallatin and um, uh, works in um, um, taking care of taking care of kids, taking care of adults that are um, mentally challenged. Uh -huh. So she's got a she's got a life's work there, and she's good at it, and uh, loves her job. That's loves great. taking care of those those people, and uh, I, I'm so proud of her. Uh, my youngest daughter Ashley um, is uh, works for the largest um, concrete and asphalt company in North America. They're owned by Old Castle in Ireland, and uh, just got a recent promotion from construction controller to um, manager of uh, construction processing and, uh, uh, and uh, analysis, uh, and just. Doing a great job. What doing about grandchildren? Got, got, got grandchildren. Got uh, uh, five grandkids and uh, Mercy. got uh, four great grandkids. And so, goodness. Yeah, I'm not that old. No, I don't think you're I not. am, but I just, guess I am. Well, you're just a couple years older than me, so you're not that old. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> you're not that old. Let's talk about the early years a little bit. Growing up. You remember those early days back going to church, man, and I do all the times we were birds, weren't we? Back in that day, and I know people don't understand it now, but back in that day, you could get on your bicycle and ride all over the city. Yep, um, sure could. I heard you talk in one of your previous programs about there wasn't a gym that you couldn't get into it in wasn't. the city. And those of us in, in my circle of friends, we could go to a lot of different gyms in the city as well. I remember the old Howell gym. Well, you yeah. Howell school gym. You better not shoot it with a lot of arc. <laughs> <laughs> I'd hit the rafters sometime yeah. on the shot, but um, Clarksville High and, and uh, some others, uh, we'd get in. But uh, Fun times, weren't they? Great times, great times. You remember, you didn't ever play with Hatchet Oakley, did you? Yeah, you did. You may you may shoot the free throw, but you may not shoot the layup. Hey, <laughs> gentlemen, the lane is closed. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's how you learn. That's where I learned to to really play some basketball is playing against older guys that were physical. Yeah. I mean, very physical. Um, so you had to you had to adapt yeah you had to play with the older guys on Saturday and Sunday if you went over to get a game you were going to play with the older guy that's right and if you didn't win you're off the floor remember that's that? right that's right you know you better be with a pretty good team or you're off the floor that's right back in those days yeah we even used to go over to Burt and play some over there Bobo and Elliot and all of us we'd go over there and get games Back in the day, myself and Billy Herndon were actually played in the church league over there at night at Bird High School. Oh, I believe that. Uh, we really enjoyed it. You, you, you had to be, you had to be a player to play, play with those guys. Well, when they you, were players. When you came up too, you lived right down the street. You played with Smitho Twins. You I played, did. I'm sure, with Pete Straw. And as well, he was older, but you played with all them. That Pete would get wild, wouldn't he? 
<laughs> he, he was a wild man at times. Uh, the twins, I always looked up to them. They what? were they were they were athletes. They were, Both of them were athletes. They just knew what the other one was going to do all the to, time. All the time. Yeah. I yeah. mean, they had, and that ball club with the the two twins and Wallace and Poland and uh, Tommy Head, pretty special. And the you, bench. You, and you had the bench. I, I mean, to me, that was the that was the best two teams in high school basketball in 1963, 62, 63. The best two teams in the state, I think. Well, they were number one for a long time, of course. Yeah. yeah. Then one in I don't know how many overtimes at Municipal Auditorium uh, against Donaldson, I believe. I might be wrong there. And had to turn around and play. They were sick and injured. Adamsville, if they'd have lost, they would have had an extra night, but they had to play and then got upset by Adamsville. Never will forget that, will you? Never will. Never will. Yeah. You were an excellent basketball player. You don't claim it, but you, man, you could shoot the eyes out of it. Well, I think I was a streak shooter. I think when I was on, I could play with anybody. I, I even, I, <laughs> I even played in the church league um, there in Hendersonville and against one of the teams that had Ray Maddox on it. Really. Uh, six seven guy, great guy. Uh, but I just have always played sports my whole life. Oh, wow. And and a game somewhere with a ball, I'm in. We played together. What really got me involved in slow pitch softball, our church, and I was only about fifteen, if that. But we started a church softball team. Never will forget that. You played shortstop. I did. Love to show that gun off to you. <laughs> Boy, you had an arm. Woo! Dicky, I mean, Thanks. Richard had an arm. Ain't no doubt about that. And, uh, but that's where, and then, of course, I got out of it. And in my 20s, really got back into slow pitch softball, yeah. of course. And you did later, too. You played on a 65 and over team that won the city championship, didn't you? I did. I did. I, a funny story, I, I, I pulled, pulled a muscle in my leg playing with that old group, as Not you can hard imagine. Because it's cold at night, and yeah. you, you're playing a doubleheader every time you play. Uh -huh. Some of those games don't get over till 10.30, and yeah. it's getting cold. And So anyway, I pulled a muscle in my leg, and I came back the next week, but I couldn't run. And in and, and that league, they would allow you to hit and then put in a pinch runner for you. So I was able to get a hit, and I hobbled down to first base, and, and the coach called for this guy to, uh, to go run for me. And this guy was 82 years old, and he, called, he said, hey, go run for the young guy. <laughs> so, 82 so anyway, years yeah. old. So anyway. <laughs> well, what I remember, and I'm already getting the signal, the first segment, now we've already gone so long here, but I want to tell you, we'll, we'll just talk more about it on segment two. Richard Rogers is our guest, back right after this. full of grief. The last thing on your mind are the details. At Neil Tarpley Parchman Funeral Home, we specialize in handling all the planning for the celebration of life your loved ones deserve. Neil Tarpley Parchman offers services for all faiths and veterans. In your hour of need, we care. Neil Tarpley Parchman, people who care, a name you can trust. Welcome back. Our guest is Richard Rogers. Richard visiting with us from Hendersonville, Tennessee, where he lives. Richard uh, 
and we'll talk much more about it. 40 years law enforcement, financial and health care investigations. How interesting. My goodness, you've got some great stories. And, but we're talking about the early years a little bit here also on this first show. And what I remember, Richard, what I consider a great athlete to me, someone that everything comes easy. You could shoot pool. You could do it well. Play ping pong. <laughs> play it well. Any game or sport that we ever took up, you played it well. Better than most. That's an athlete. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do. I do. I, I think I could have been better, but I always blamed it on poor coaching. <laughs> hey, that's a good way to blame well, it. Well, I'm teasing, of I course. I know you but, are. but, yeah, I enjoyed playing. <laughs> you did, I enjoyed did. playing. And, uh, you know what? If it had been today, I mean, we just had Clarksville High and Burt. Now, think how good you had to be to make those teams starting. Clark's flying Burke had Woodlawn, of course, out here in Montgomery Central, small schools. But today we have all these high schools, three-point shot. You'd average 20-something a game in one, on one of these teams today. Think of that. You know, I, I never th – this goes back a long ways, and I, I, I don't know why I thought about this. But we were playing in junior high, and Coach Miller, Johnny Miller, was a coach. Mm -hmm. And I was second team. So the guys back then ran out to a big lead playing Franklin, Franklin Junior High. Right. Franklin, Tennessee. Ran out to a big lead, so they put, Coach Miller put the whole second team in in the second quarter. Uh -huh. I made four straight shots, <laughs> eight points. I never played again <laughs> that game, and I never understood that. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that just goes to show you, yeah. you can get hot and, and make some points. Looks, looks like you would have played a little more. Though, too. Well, I, that's what I wondered. Uh, well, you know, hey, I guarantee you. <laughs> Coach they, knew best, though. He knew they, best. Not always. Not always they don't. They make mistakes. They're human like all of us. Oh, that's true. That's true. Coaches are human. They really are. All right, your high school years, you enjoy those? For the most part, I did. Yeah, for the most part, I know. You had a mother that was a saint, though, Richard. I did. I did. Uh, she was. She was. Man, she brought you to church when those doors were open. Yeah, it was, it was just she and I in church. Uh, no doubt. You know, I remember what a pleasant face and always had a nice little smile and just a sweet woman. Greg, yeah. how are you? Yeah. You know, just a sweet woman. And yeah, no question about it. Uh, after high school, you went to the P. I did. I, uh, I, my heart wasn't in it. I really didn't, I really didn't. Go to class much. I, I had the same problem. Uh, I, I, I I wound up going, wasting five quarters, going, wasting my mother's money and some of my own um, because I didn't care. Wound up with 19 quarter hours that I could use. Um, but I got a chance after the military service to go back to school, and I made the most of it. So and what I'm you, grateful. yeah, you, what you did, you joined the military. I got drafted in 1968. I didn't join. <laughs> they had to come get me. You're like me. I don't join anything. <laughs> no. They joined me. They, that's right. They found me, yeah. They found you. Yeah. So you were drafted. I was. In 68, and how did that go? Well... They sent me to MP school down in Fort Gordon, Georgia, and um, all the class ahead of me got sent to Vietnam. Uh, my class, um, most of us got sent to Vietnam. I didn't get sent there. I got sent to Texas at a sister base of Clarksville base. Really? Which was a top secret base here in adjacent to Fort Campbell. Like the birdcage. Yeah, exactly like the birdcage. 
but in Texas. Uh -huh. And uh, then they closed that base in 1969 and sent me to Albuquerque, New Mexico. And um, that, then I um, was able to play some softball while I was out there and uh, <laughs> worked a little bit in finance and... Uh, got hooked. Yes, and uh, then got out, of, got out of the Army in August of 1970 and came back and went back to the P. GI Bill. GI Bill saved me and uh, got my degree in accounting and got a second chance, Greg. So you basically got into law enforcement in the military, got into finance in the military, and this is what set you on the right track. So the military was really probably the best thing ever happened to you. It, it really was. I, I didn't think so at the time. Uh, I know you did. But I really had a good, I really had a good two years, Greg. I really, really did. I, I met some great people. Um, just had a great time. Uh, made the most of it. Um, tried to enjoy where I was and what I was doing and, and did. Uh -huh. and, uh, like I said, got a second chance, and I, I made the most of it. So when you started back at the P, you majored in finance. Or accounting. majored in accounting. I did. And uh, we were talking about some of your instructors and all. But you had some good ones and had some tough ones, didn't you? I had some, I had some really tough ones. Uh, uh, I had some good ones, and uh, most of the good ones were tough ones. Uh -huh. Dr. J.F. Burney. Jerry Witherspoon, they were good instructors. Lawrence Baggett, um, they, they, were, they were the backbone of the accounting department in the business they, school. They led you on the right path, though. They did. So when you graduated from college, where'd you go to work? I went to work for um, the federal government. I uh, was with IRS and uh, criminal investigation, and uh, basically did financial investigations for the next uh, 20, 25 years uh, for them. For the feds? For the feds, yeah. Yeah. And uh, then, then retired from there and um, worked for my church a year, then I went to work for the state and uh, wound up, wound up uh, in health care. Uh, doing some health care work, then got a job in TBI in the health care uh, investigation part of it, and uh, retired from there a couple now, years ago. Now, you're 40 years in law enforcement. You work with the feds. You work with, for, and around some very interesting people. I did. You know. I did. Just like you said, James Neal taught you a, a important story, a valuable a, lesson. A he, lesson. He, I was supposed to um, meet with him now, and his client. James Neal, if you don't know who he is, the what, former Watergate prosecutor. He uh, uh, represented Exxon in the Valdez spill. You worked in Washington a lot. I, I did. I, I, I was I was fortunate enough to be up there for a month in 1984, rewriting some training material and so forth. And so I, he, he contacted me one day. We were supposed to have a meeting that afternoon around 1.30, 2 o'clock. He called me from uh, Reagan National Airport and said, my flight's been delayed. Can we postpone our meeting to 3.30? That taught me a valuable lesson that Mr. Neal, as important as he was, as important as his time was, that he could call me and tell me that he was going to be delayed and to reschedule. And I thought, if he can do that, there is no reason that I can't return a phone call or no reason that somebody else can't return my phone call. Amen. And that's a pet that peeve of me, mine. You call no me, excuse. I'm going to return it if you want me to return it. Right. If I call you, I expect the same courtesy. Absolutely. That was a great lesson learned, wasn't it? It was. It was. What kind of gentleman is he? Honorable. 
honorable. If he tells you something, you can take it to the bank. Really? Yes, sir. He's 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 passed now, but uh, he was he was a good and decent man. What are very bright man? What are some of the uh, well? We're going to talk about some of the cases that you've worked on, but before that, show number one. We're going to do two, remember, but we'll be back with a stretch run right after this. It's the Nissan Now Sales Event at Matthews Nissan. Voted Clarksville's best place to buy a car. Nissan was a major hit at the auto show. 7877 off a new Altima. New Versa, 10677 6777 off a new Rogue. 11777 off a new Titan. Incredible. Get big savings at MatthewsNissan.com. You're gonna love our prices. You know, we've only got a minute and a half left in this show number one. Now, Richard Rogers will join us again next week. We have so much I want to talk about because he had such an interesting career. But let's end the show today, and we'll pick up with that next week. wonder how many hours we uh, spent and how much fun we had at old Third Street Pool Room when we were kids. <laughs> now, come on. We, oh, I was afraid you was going to bring oh, that up. We, we progressed from, uh, I love that snooker table, buddy. Uh, you well, I did too. I did too. Hey, get you a package of eat of snacks and a cold drink for 15 cents. Either that or put some peanuts in your Coke. You could do it that way. Yeah, yeah. You know, and a lot of people did it that way. Yeah, but, but of course, before you did that, you had to look at the bottom of the Coke bottle and see, see how far from. away. <laughs> That's right. You know the furthest you could get, don't you? I Nome, forgot. Nome, Alaska. Oh. Nome, Alaska. I if you ever got it. Nome, Alaska, no one's going to beat you on the faraway bottle. Shorty. Odale. Hoyt. Odale. <laughs> Hoyt. Hoyt. Yeah. Hoyt. Wow. Let me tell you, and I can't, I'm going to tell this in fact. I was at uh, a restaurant one night, the old Jiffy Burger. Guy got shot. Hoyt. Right there in front of us, laying on the floor, Hoyt never missed a bite. Like it, like it's nothing to it. He's a tough bird. Had fun with you. Show one. Let's My do it again. Pleasure. We'll do it. He'll be back next week. Thanks to Steve Sawyer. Until then, have a nice rest of the day, folks.